All right, there was another one back here. I, I was going back to the pranks, but I'll <laughs> <laughs> being on set with everybody, I, Jake was obviously the most of the prankster. We yeah, we didn't, we didn't prank that much on set. Um, it, because we were, there's a lot to engage you, you know, and, and, and you've got really long hours and everything. There's a lot of repetition on a press tour, and then you're kind of looking for an outlet. Whereas they, on, on, on set, there's a lot to, to do mentally. Jake, particularly, I mean, all of them do, but Jake takes his role very seriously. He very much gets into that space where the character is, and so he's thinking like that and trying to be that person. And so it, it, it kept him from too much mischief, because he was very busy. <laughs> and is there anything special that you took? Didn't, was given. I was from. given. Um, I've never taken anything, and sometimes I, I wish I had. It's like, oh, I would have liked that. But I, but I, you know, and I felt bad. So I was given two things. One, I have one of the peace sprays, which is really cool. Probably oh. the coolest thing I own. Um, I'm supposed to get a cryopod. I haven't yet. I'm looking forward to that. And then I have a rock that we didn't use. Um, you know, in the book, there's a scene where she has the scar on her face, and it's a big scar. It's like supposed to be the palm of her hand, and he has to hit her with the rock. And for a multitude of reasons, we didn't do that, but we planned on it. And so I have this great, it looks so real, and it's out of foam. And it's my favorite thing, because when I first got home, I was throwing it at everybody. And, you know, they're, I'm like, oh, yeah, look at this rock. And I'm just like, ah. And, like, and it's just this foam thing that doesn't hurt. And so I had a lot of fun with that, but it doesn't actually appear in the movie. I also have teacups from Austin Land. <laughs> one of them from a scene that was cut, and then one that they use in the, in the scene. What's so happening? I know you said that. Yeah. Um, Sony Classics purchased it at, um, so at uh, Sundance, and it's supposed to come out end of summer, hopefully. Yeah. I'm excited for it to come out. It's really funny. Oh, the I can't wait to see the movie. Thank you. <laughs> so I know that you said that Andrew Nichols is brilliant, um, and you were really excited to have him direct this um, for you and bring the adaptation to life. But I remember you also said that he had some really, really good ideas that you were kind of kicking yourself that you didn't think of, one of them being the peace spray and taking mm -hmm. the violence and the guns away because they were, you know, not violent, they were more pure. Are there any other I mean, that um, was, ideas that he came up with that... That was the main thing. Um, a couple of ideas uh, that just hadn't occurred to me. Um, you know, we were filming in Louisiana because that's where you film now. And uh, when we were doing the Twilight movies there, the whole time we were trying to hide the fact that we were in Louisiana. So we were, you know, everything was on sound stages. And when we were outside, we like found the one stand of trees in the entire place and then brought in extra trunks to make it look like a bigger forest. And, and we were always trying to disguise where we were. And Andrew said, you know, what if we embrace it? We have Melanie B from Louisiana and then we can shoot in the swamp and with the houses on the pillars and we can and we can be out on a beautiful plantation with the trees full of full of moss and everything. And I thought that was a really good because it doesn't matter in the story she can be from anywhere. It doesn't affect the story if she's not from, you know, San Diego and if it doesn't it doesn't change anything. And so then we got to really celebrate the beauties of where we were. Um, because he's always good at finding the best look for anything. And, and I loved it. We, well, the whole time we were on Twilight, we never got to go and film in the swamp, which was really cool. <laughs> it was fun to, to get to see all of the really cool parts of Louisiana. I had read the book on the plane here and then watched the movie last night, and I was noticing like how insanely visual he really is like to keep from the book. Did you, were you involved in that a lot, like keeping it? Like, do you know what I mean? It really feels like you took exactly your complete it's, visuals from the book and put them well, I think he heightened the visuals a lot. Um, little things that I wish, I mean, if we put all the footage we had in, it would be four hours long. Um, but I wish, <laughs> a lot of it isn't like, it's not like big, you know, pivotal scenes or, or even dialogue. It's, I wish you could see more of the souls walking around because their they're, uh, wardrobe and just the way they hold themselves. And, and we shot some pieces that we, that we didn't fit everything in. And, but it just looks so cool. And I didn't picture them dressing like just that little bit more, with a little bit more polish than we do. I was noticing so much about their outfits, and mm -hmm. I usually don't do that when I watch films. I was like, oh, look at their shoes, like, look at their shirts. Like, like, I, I know. was so conscious of it that entire he, time. He, he's, like, if he was filming our little round table right now, he would come over, and he would mess with your hand, like, two, and then, and then he'd be like, and he'd come back, and he'd go one millimeter more, and then he'd come back, and he'd one millimeter more. He cares about every hair that's in the scene. It's it's an amazing thing. It can make for a long filming day. <laughs> but in the end, it's totally worth it. So. Now you said you had you would probably have like four hours of footage. So what was going into the decision to keep it just at two hours instead of maybe? 
pushing it to two and a no. half. I mean, it's a big time commitment when you hear the movie is two and a half hours, and you know. Every, some things that you love can start to feel bloated, I think, in the in the time, you know, because you're looking at all these nuances, and someone who comes to see the movie wants the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, some people, I would be happy to sit through two and a half hours of a movie that I loved. Mm -hmm. But then I have said in movies that I didn't love that they were two and a half hour long, and it felt very long. Yeah. Um, it wasn't that big of a sacrifice. I felt like it was a lot harder on Austin Land, actually, because we have a three and a half hour comedy, and we had to cut whole scenes, and nobody wants a comedy over 90 minutes, but we were cutting ridiculously funny scenes because we had to keep the story. And that's where the DVD extras yeah. are going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love, I'm going to love that. Just one uh, last question, I guess. Um, from someone who hasn't read the book and saw it last initially come to Earth, how did they insert themselves into the first human? Which is well, something I never thought about. I mean, I think it's a little bit in there. I, I think actually the the uh, opening, I get confused because I've had the opening for the second book written for a really long time. That's something I did in the early stages because I wasn't sure where I was going to put it that goes into more detail with that. Um, but they came with their spider bodies um, because those are really... Uh, useful you know they have a lot they're they're strong and they can handle a lot and so they just had to get to a few people because once you have one and a cry tank a big part when the big cry tanks where they keep the babies where there's like you know a million of them it doesn't take long so they like it, it talks about in the beginning of the next one how they worked in like you find the preschool teacher or probably not preschool, you'd want like the, the high school teacher of the kid who is the secret service agent. And through that, you work into the president like in four easy steps. And then once you have the president and his people under, you start controlling the information. You're doing this in every country. And then, you know, I would invite Lori over for an afternoon lunch and she would say, oh, of course I haven't seen Stephanie in a while. And then she would leave a different person because, you know, it'd, just, it'd be Thanks. that smooth. <laughs> and you would go home and, you would, and your husband and your kids and everybody that you know and all of your friends would then slowly, it would it not take that long because it just works out exponentially um, and it's very quiet and no one knows what's going on because you don't lose your memories there's nothing to give you away in the movie the eyes are a little bit more obvious right yeah. and yeah. so it, it would be easier but in the books you have to have a direct light and even then it's kind of just a reflection that's a little mm -hmm. off but it's not it's not so obvious you'd be like there's something different about you it would just be oh hey my neighbors are a lot nicer lately and everyone's doing yeah. <laughs> 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 right. right. so thank you, thank you. Thank you. Probably the most interesting interview I'm going to do all day. So. <laughs>